A bill that would limit the NSA's ability to collect phone data from Americans passed the House yesterday, but has triggered a possible showdown with the Senate on Capitol Hill. WSJ's Damian Paletta joins us from Washington with the details. Good morning, Damian. Hey, hey, Veronica, how are you? Good, thanks. So this bill that would require the NSA to get court approval to obtain phone records received broad support in the House. Why are some Senate Republicans so adamantly against it? Well, the, you know, the key right here is Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and to some extent Senator Marco Rubio, who's running for president. They're really against uh, limiting the NSA's powers to collect this information. They feel like the NSA and the intelligence community more broadly needs as much data as possible to be able to prevent another terrorist attack. Marco Rubio even said that if the government had this power before 9-11, it could have stopped the September 11th uh, terrorist attacks possibly. So, you know, there's a lot of defense hawks who feel like the government needs as much information as it can to be able to um, essentially detect when the next attack is coming. In the House, some Democrats and Republicans feel like they've come up with a compromise here. They got almost 340 votes that would essentially let the NSA get the information, but they'd have to obtain it from the telephone companies on a case-by-case -case basis. They would not allow the NSA any longer to just sweep up millions of records in bulk and then kind of pick and choose what information it wants. So, you know, this program expires on June 1st. It was part of the Patriot Act, and this provision of the Patriot Act expires on June 1st, so they don't have much time to sort things out. It's only in um, Congress for a couple more days before the Memorial Day recess. So we're either going to see them do some sort of short-term extension of the existing program. We're probably going to see this program expire because there's just not going to be enough time to get a resolution. Damon, you mentioned in your story that one issue that complicates matters is how a federal appeals court defined the Patriot Act. Tell us more about that. Sure. Last week, a federal appeals court, uh, the ACLU had filed a lawsuit challenging the legitimacy and the legality of this, of this program. And a federal appeals court said that Section 215 of the Patriot Act did not authorize this program's existence, essentially undercutting the government's argument that this program is legal and that it is authorized by law. So what the, you know, what the appeals court did not do is strike down this program. It essentially said Congress needs to work this out, but Congress needs to know that this program is not supported by the law as it is written today. Now, you've been following this and past voting on the NSA closely. Do you see any wiggle room for negotiations between the House and the Senate on the NSA's powers? You know, I think they're going to have to come up this, with some sort of deal because I think both sides are very nervous that if there is another terrorist attack, you know, they do want the intelligence community, the CIA, the NSA, to have as much information as possible. But this is really kind of a the first big post-Edward Snowden congressional vote um, where we're seeing a, ma a major shift in the sort of the ideology, ideology of Congress. After 9-11, you know, um, Congress essentially wanted to give the executive branch of a government a blank check to do what they thought was necessary to prevent another attack. Now we're seeing a little bit of uh, apprehension and anxiety about if you give the government too much power, you know, what kinds of programs might they do in secret that people might not be comfortable with. So that's the sort of thing that they're wrestling with. They just don't have much time to sort things out. We'll be watching that closely. Thanks so much, Damien. Sure, my pleasure.